In the beginning of the story, a man is shown in the wilderness, and his name is Max. Max used to be a police officer at one time, but now there are no police, no army, and no leaders in the world. The world has gone through a nuclear war, and as a result, the air has become toxic, and the entire earth has become barren. Then, a group of vehicles arrives at this place, and they collide with Max's car, flipping it over. Max is captured by these people, and they take him with them. A tattoo is made on his back with the words O negative, which is Max's blood group. These people have essentially enslaved Max. All these people work for Immortan Joe, who is the most powerful person in this place. He wears a special mask on his face with two pipes on both sides, allowing him to breathe. In other words, he needs to wear the mask to stay alive. Immortan Joe resides at the top of a mountain. Below, there are many weak and starving people. Immortan Joe tells them that he is the only one who can lead them to a better life, and he releases water for them. Seeing the water, everyone becomes very happy because there is a severe shortage of water during this time. People are dying of hunger and thirst. At this point, a girl named Furiosa is shown. She also works for Immortan Joe. Immortan Joe had sent her with some people to a fuel station to collect fuel, but before they could reach the fuel station, she turns her vehicle toward the east. One of her men questions her decision, but Furiosa insists on going east. Her orders cannot be disobeyed because she is the most senior among them, so all the vehicles turn east. Immortan Joe observes this from a distance with binoculars. He rushes into a chamber where he had kept five girls as captives. These girls are supposed to bear children for him to continue his lineage. Now, all five of these girls are missing, and he realizes that Furiosa has taken them with her. He orders his men to pursue them. Immortan Joe's army is ecstatic because they are ready to give their lives for him. His army is called War Boys, and due to nuclear radiation, they are plagued by a disease that requires regular blood transfusions to stay alive. That's why they have turned Max into a captive. A war boy who is very weak, but determined to capture Furiosa attaches Max to the front of his vehicle. A pipe from Max's body is connected to the war soldier's body, allowing him to receive energy so that he can participate in battle and potentially die for Immortan Joe. Dying in this way is considered an honor. Now, Immortan Joe's army arrives at the scene just before they capture Furiosa. A massive sandstorm approaches. Furiosa drives her vehicle into the storm, but the war boy with Max attached to his vehicle also pursues her into the storm. When he gets close to Furiosa's vehicle, he pours gasoline into his vehicle. He plans to set his car on fire and crash into Furiosa's vehicle to stop her. However, before he can do that, Max grabs his hand and at the same moment, Furiosa's large vehicle collides with the War Boy's vehicle. The War Boy's vehicle flips over. In the next morning, it is shown that the storm has completely subsided. Max is alive, but the War Boy is dead. Max, along with Furiosa and the five girls, is now in control. He points a gun at Furiosa and instructs her and the girls to cut the chains. But when one of the girls is cutting the chain, Furiosa attacks Max. There is a struggle between the two, and just as the War Boy who had Max attached to his vehicle, Max and the War Soldier together overpower Furiosa and take complete control of her. Seeing this, the war soldier is pleased and cuts Max's chain. Max punches him and takes his vehicle, escaping from there. With Furiosa of five girls she has rescued from the captivity of Immortan Joe. She tells them, if you want to survive, come with me, because Immortan Joe's entire army is coming from behind to capture them. Furiosa runs towards a vehicle that Max had taken earlier from there. The vehicle stops a short distance away, and Furiosa reaches it. She tells Max that she has set a sequence in it, and it cannot run without her. So, Max agrees to take them all with him. They continue driving and eventually reach a mountainous region. There, they encounter a gang that claims the territory. Furiosa explains that she had a deal with them to allow them to pass, but now she's unsure if they will honor it. In the territory controlled by this gang, there is a confrontation. The leader of the gang questions Furiosa because she had claimed that only a few people would follow them, but now three rival war parties are pursuing them. Furiosa had promised to exchange fuel for safe passage through this territory. Suddenly, they see Immortan Joe and his men approaching from behind. In the territory controlled by a group of expert bikers, they begin pursuing Max and Furiosa with their motorcycles. Max and Furiosa manage to eliminate all the bikers one by one. Before they can proceed further, Immortan Joe catches up with them in his vehicle. He attempts to shoot Furiosa, 
but one of the girls, who is pregnant with Immortan Joe's child, is brought outside the vehicle. Immortan Joe refrains from shooting her because he doesn't want to harm his unborn child. It's vital for his lineage. Immortan Joe then tries to stop Furiosa's vehicle by firing a grappling hook at it, which gets stuck in their steering. However, the pregnant girl gets out of the vehicle and cuts the hook. In the process, she slips, and the door breaks, causing her to fall to the ground. Immortan Joe tries to save her, making a sharp turn with his vehicle, which flips over. He sees the pregnant girl is badly injured and screams in agony. Meanwhile, Max and Furiosa continue advancing. In their vehicle, there is a man named Nux, who initially wanted to kill them but now wants to help. They do so just in time as Immortan Joe's pursuing convoy reaches the dynamite rigged area, causing an explosion that halts their vehicles. However, one of the Morton Joe's vehicles manages to get ahead and continues pursuing Max and Furiosa. Just as Max and Furiosa are about to be caught, their vehicle's tire gets stuck in a quagmire, preventing them from moving forward. Nux, who is driving the tanker truck, rams it into a Morton Joe's pursuing vehicle, causing a massive explosion that takes out most of the enemy vehicles. All the war boys chasing them are killed. Furiosa is severely weakened by this point, and Max realizes she needs a blood transfusion. He donates his blood to her, saving her life. Together, they continue their journey toward Immortan Joe's citadel. On the way, Immortan Joe and his men spot their vehicle. Realizing that they are heading towards the citadel, where there are no defenses, Immortan Joe decides to reclaim it. He and his men start pursuing Max and Furiosa. Max and Furiosa manage to eliminate several of Immortan Joe's men, but are eventually caught. Immortan Joe captures one of the girls. Furiosa somehow reaches Immortan Joe's vehicle and removes his mask, leading to his death. However, many of his war boys still want to kill them. Nux, who had been driving the tanker, Together, they continue toward the citadel. When they arrive at the citadel and show Immortan Joe's dead body, the people there rejoice. Immortan Joe is dead, and they open the water supply. Everyone is elated and Furiosa and the four women are welcomed by the war boys as the new rulers of the citadel. The place is now under their control, with an abundant supply of water and greenery. Max, having completed the task he set out to do, quietly walks away from the citadel. This is where the story ends.